Hey guys, hoping all is well with everyone. So in this video, we're going to be continuing the read-along of The Secret Zoo, Secrets and Shadows by Brian Chick. And in this video, we're going to be reading, uh, continuing on with Chapter 4. And as always, I'll be showing you guys any pictures or letters from Mr. Darby to the Action Scouts. But as always, please feel free to follow along. Chapter 4, The Swing of Things. Maybe I'm not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree, Ella said, but connect the dots. What are you talking about? Megan walked back through the chimps, briefly touching her palms to their heads as she moved past. About 30 feet in front from the edge of the platform, she turned and faced not only her friends, but the first orangutan in the line of the apes across the trees. Noah understood what his sister was thinking. Megan, you sure about this? He asked. No, Megan said, but we trust Mr. Darby, right? I don't think he'd put us in any danger, not without warning us first. With that, she ran through the crowd, past the scouts, and threw herself over the edge of the platform. The orangutan shot out its long arm, seized Megan's wrist, and swung her forward. At the farthest point of its reach, it sprang open its fingers, releasing her. Megan soared to the next ape in line, a chimpanzee who was already reaching behind itself with an open hand. The oafish-looking chimp cinched Megan's wrist and pitched her around, just as the ape before it had done. The catch and throw of the first two apes had been easy enough, but Megan knew that what would make it easier. She could swing across the animals, treating their hands like monkey bars. She just needed to twist her body, alternate her arms, and heave her weight. In the air between the second and third ape, Megan dropped one arm and reached the other forward, pivoting at the same time. When the third chimp seized her wrist, she grabbed the chimps, and together they swung her weight forward, their arms locked like two acrobats on a trapeze. When the chimp let go, she soared forward, an arm and a leg extended in both directions. Glancing at Ella and Richie, Noah said, You see what she's doing, right? Yep, said Ella. She elbowed a chimp that had stepped on her toes and added, I'm just afraid she's making it look too easy. We can do this. Noah said. It's not like we haven't done this kind of thing a million times. How often have we swung across the branches in Fort Scout? With that, Noah took ten steps back and then dashed to the edge of the platform. Screaming, he lunged into the air, his right arm pushed forward, ready to lock, grasps with the next with the first ape. I'm next, said Ella. She brushed past Richie and walked several apes deep into the crowd. There's only one way across this place, so I better cowgirl up. She charged forward, her ponytail whipping across her shoulders. Then she sailed toward the orangutan's outstretched arm. Richie stepped cautiously toward the edge of the platform. The orangutan in the tree stared at him. It tipped its head to one side, then the other, then grunted. It slammed a fist against its chest, opened its hands toward Richie, and rolled its fingertips on and off its palms, beckoning him. Richie glanced over his shoulders. Me? He inched forward and stopped. With his fingers cupped around his mouth, he called out, You sure you've got enough strength left? The orangutan threw back its head and roared, exposing its cr crooked yellow teeth. Then, still reaching for Richie, it shook the limb it was hanging from, whipping the leafy twigs through the air. Okay, okay! Richie thought about it for a few seconds before he backed up at least 20 feet. Here it goes! He broke into a run. At the end of the platform, he halted so suddenly that his glasses slipped to the tip of his nose and nearly fell off his face. With his toes pointed over the edge, he stared into the green abyss, his heart racing. The faraway plane was peppered with gorillas. A loud screech dazed his senses. He felt a tug at his jacket collar and glanced backward to find himself nose to nose with a chimp, whose cavernous mouth released a foul fog all over his glasses. <laughs> Help! Richie sputtered. Richie's legs shot up behind him and his head dropped forward as he was suspended above the platform in the grasp of the chimpanzee. His arms dangled beneath his body. His world began to swing back and forth. The ape was rocking him, preparing to throw him toward the orangutan in the tree. Uh, nice chimp, Richie stammered. Um, good chimp. Chimp no throw Richie over edge. Chimp, no! His words broke into an open scream as the ape hurled him forward. Up and outward he went, as if in slow motion. 
His vision gazed to the faraway grass dotted with gorillas. Then he saw the orangutan arm stretch out to grab him. Richie reached forward and focused on the ape's hand, which grew larger and larger until he could see its fingers. Long, hairy, thick, and powerful enough to crush bones. The ape's hand was within inches of his own when something terrible happened. Richie stopped. For an instant, he hung in the air, motionless. Then he plummeted. As the world spun and whirled in front of him, something as coarse as sandpaper squeezed his wrist. Richie's body jolted as his stomach dropped. The orangutan had leaped down and snagged him out of the air. Richie tried to holler his gratitude, but discovered he was terrified to shape a single intelligible word. What came out instead was a strange guttural roar, not like one of the many ape sounds. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr